so good morning dear students so today we will try to discuss the unit 2 so before going to start the unit 2 let us see what are the topics we have learned in the unit 1 so in the previous sessions we have covered unit 1 unit 1 consists of origin of satellite communications historical background that means uh, when it was started what was the first satellite what is the basic idea behind the satellite communication so who introduced that basic idea so that everything we discussed in historical background the next one is basic concepts of satellite communication means uh, what is meant by earth station what is meant by satellite what is meant by what are the types of satellites what is natural satellite what is artificial satellite okay what is orbit what are the types of orbits what are the applications of various satellites present in the orbit etc we have discussed as the basic concepts of satellite communication next we discussed frequency allocations for satellite services various frequency allocations like c band ku band ka band their significance c band significance etc we have discussed in frequency allocations for satellite services topic next what are the various applications of satellite services that is weather forecasting DTH live streaming of the videos etc all we have discussed in the military services okay all we have discussed in the applications next future trends of the satellite communications that is from the uh, beginning of the satellite till today what are the what are the uh, enhancements in the satellites done what are the uh, various applications evolved due to the uh, due to the various types of satellites launched that all we covered in the future trends of the satellite communication these are the topics we covered in unit 1 in unit 1 so let us start the second unit in today's session the second unit name is orbital mechanics and launchers second unit name is orbital mechanics and launchers okay the contents in the unit 2 are orbital mechanics look angle determination orbital perturbations next orbit determination launches and launch vehicles and orbital effects in communication system performance so what are the various type on contents which we are going to learn in the unit 2 orbital mechanics look angle determination orbital perturbations orbit determination launches and launch vehicle orbital effects in communication system performance these are the various types to various topics we are going to learn in the unit 2 in today's session we will try to discuss some topics in orbital mechanics that is the first topic orbital mechanics we will try to discuss okay so we know that when a satellite is placed in the space space means above the atmospheric drag okay from the surface of the earth which is called as a space okay we are placing the satellite in that region in an orbit okay so the satellite achieves stability in that space orbit okay due to two forces acting on it one is a due to centrifugal force and another one is a one is centrifugal force another one is a centripetal force okay a satellite is stable in its orbit when two forces are acting on it in opposite direction okay so what are those two forces one is centrifugal force another one is centripetal force you can see the diagram here for example, this is the satellite, this is the earth, okay, and this is the satellite which is placed in one orbit. For example, R is the distance from the center of the earth to the satellite, R is the distance from the center of the earth to the satellite. So, on the satellite which is revolving around the earth, with a velocity v with a velocity v okay two forces will be acting on the satellite one is centrifugal force another one is centripetal force centrifugal force 
is due to the kinetic energy or the velocity which tries to pull the satellite into higher orbits. What is centrifugal force? Centrifugal force is due to the kinetic energy or motion of the satellite which pulls the satellite into higher orbits. Okay, like this. Indicated in upward direction, arrow. Centripetal force is the force acting on the satellite, okay, which pulls the satellite towards the earth. Okay, this centripetal force is due to the gravitational force of the earth. And this centripetal force and the centrifugal force are equal, are equal and are acting in opposite directions on the satellite and makes the satellite these forces make the satellite to be stable in the to be stable in the in its orbit okay you can see centrifugal force fling the satellite means means take the satellite into the higher orbits towards the higher orbits due to the kinetic energy centripetal force is due to the gravitational pull by the earth so these two forces are acting are equal and act opposite direction to make the satellite stable in its orbit okay so there are some equations there are some equations to define centrifugal force and centripetal force you can see here centrifugal force f out is equal to m into v square by r whereas centripetal force f in equal to g m e into m e by r square these are the two important equations which are used to define centrifugal force as well as centripetal force you can we can define the terms which are used in the equations capital g is the gravitational constant capital g is the gravitational constant that is 6.672 into 10 power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square where me is the mass of the earth gme the product of gravitational constant and mass of the earth is called as kepler's constant is called as kepler's constant and it is given as 3.98 into 10 power 5 kilometer cube per second square so gme is the kepler constant and small m is the mass of the satellite small v is the velocity of the satellite and small r what is small r the distance of the satellite from the center of the earth the distance of the satellite from the center of the earth okay so these are the terms we used in defining the two forces that is centrifugal and centripetal forces which are equal and acting opposite on the satellite to make it stable and revolve around the earth. Using those terms we can still write some more equations for acceleration that is a equal to mu in mu by r square where mu is nothing but kepler's constant which we already know g into m into g into me that is gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the earth is kepler's constant mu okay so acceleration of the satellite in its orbit is given as mu by r square and velocity of the satellite in the circular orbit is given as v equal to mu by r power 1 by 2 mu by r power 1 by 2 using these relations the centrifugal force centripetal force acceleration as well as velocity of the satellite we can find the period of the satellite time period of the satellite means the time taken by the satellite to revolve to give one revolution is called as period of the satellite okay so that is given as t equal to 2 pi r by v okay or you can you can say 2 pi r power 3 by 2 by mu power 1 by 2 using the when, when you substitute the uh, mu by mu by r power 1 by 2 in in place of v here you can find you can get the the final time period 
relation. So in order to observe the satellite, we need some parameters like velocity of the satellite. Means in order to find the location of the satellite, we need a few more parameters actually. So, but, but the basic parameters required to locate the satellite in the space is velocity of the satellite as well as time period of the satellite. Okay. The next topic is Kepler's laws of planetary motion. So the scientist John Kepler developed three laws, three planetary laws. Okay. So by observing the motion of the planets which are uh, present in the solar system, he uh, he introduced three planetary laws. Okay, laws of motion. The first one is uh, the orbit of any smaller body which is revolving around a larger body is always an ellipse. Okay. If a smaller body is revolving around a larger body, then the, the path of the smaller body is an ellipse or it follows an elliptical path. Okay. With the center of the mass of the larger body as one of the foci. The second one is the orbit of smaller body sweeps equal sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals. The orbit of the smaller body sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals. The third one is that is the whatever the time period we have just uh, introduced we have just learned t equal to so that is the time period given by actually uh, Kepler as a third law. The square of the period of the revolution of the smaller body about the larger body equals a constant multiplied by the third power of the semi-major axis of the orbital ellipse. This is nothing but, the third law is nothing but the time period of the satellite what we discussed. Okay. So these are the few topics learned today. Let us recollect what we have learned. So we, we started the unit 2 today. Unit 2 name is Orbital Mechanics and Launchers. The contents of the unit 2 are Orbital Mechanics, Look Angle Determination, Orbital Perturbations, Orbit Determination, Launches and Launch Vehicles, Orbital Effects in Communication System Performance. Orbital Mechanics is the first topic. So to achieve a stable orbit of a satellite, okay, when it is placed in the space, two forces which are equal should act on the satellite in opposite direction. Then only the satellite will be stable in its orbit. Those two forces are called as centrifugal and centripetal force. Centrifugal force pulls the satellite out of the orbit or into the higher orbits. Whereas centripetal force is due to the gravitational pull by the earth. It drags the satellite towards the earth. When these two forces are equal and opposite in a, and, and works opposite direction on the satellite, the satellite will be stable in its orbit. Two equations to define the centrifugal and two centrifugal forces are there. F out, that is centrifugal force equal to mb square by r. F in, that is centrifugal force f in equal to gmem by r square. Where the terms used in those equations are gravitational constant, mass of the earth, Kepler's constant, mass of the satellite, velocity of the satellite and the distance of the satellite from the center of the earth. Using those terminology, few more parameters are defined for the satellite. That is acceleration equal to, acceleration of satellite equal to mu by r square, velocity of the satellite equal to mu by r power 1 by 2 and period of the satellite t equal to 2 pi r power 3 by 2 divided by mu power 1 by 2. The Kepler's, Kepler, John Kepler is the scientist, Ke John Kepler is the scientist who developed the three laws of planetary motion by observing the behavior of the planets in the solar system. What are those three laws? One is orbit of any smaller body revolving around the larger body is always an ellipse. The second one is the orbit of smaller body spe sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals. The third one is uh, the square of the period of the revolution of the smaller body about the larger body equals a constant multiplied by the third power of the semi-major axis. That is nothing but the whatever the 
whatever the uh, uh, period of time period of the satellite which we have defined the third law okay so these are the few basics in the next session we'll try to uh, we'll try to move with an interesting topic that is uh, location of the that is the location of the satellite in the space how to determine the location of the satellite in the space okay thank you very much